Good morning, everybody. It's a cold, blustery day outside today, and I decided I'm going to spend a little bit of time with the Colts. I haven't really been spending a lot of time with them. I haven't been fooling with their feet, and uh, so I have decided to do that, and I'm going to probably take them for a walk a little later on, and even talk about my harnesses a little bit. Um, I have I've had a, com a lot of comments about uh, whether or not I'm going to be castrating these guys. Um, I actually, I'm going to brush while I talk here. I, I really haven't decided yet what I'm going to do as far as keeping them stallions or, or gelding them. Um, I am definitely not going to do anything until the spring. Um, my veterinarian from many years ago said something about castrating and the way he likes to do it and I think it's a great thought and I think it's true. A horse tends to grow on their first year, their hind end grows and then on their second year their front end catches up to them. So if you castrate them on that first year they tend to have a, they're not as even as if you castrated them on a second year or a fourth year. So I've done that um, for years now. I've made sure that they're either castrated on when they're two or when they're four, mostly when they're two. And I have seen a slight difference in that they are more uniform by doing that, by castrating them as a yearling. They tend to be, in my opinion, not quite so um, uniform and their hind end tends to be a little bigger than their front end and so they just don't look quite so nice in my opinion. So that's what I'm going to do with these guys if I choose to castrate them it'll be next spring. I would like to attempt to um, breed lady in the spring with one of these guys but I like both these guys so well I can't decide which one I'd want to which one I'd want to use to breed lady with. And uh, I haven't worked them enough. They're too young to know how good they're going to be. So um, I don't know which one I would use if I, if I did choose to get her bred. Um, we'll just have to see what spring, what happens in the spring and, and go from there. I had uh, trimmed their feet a little while ago and I haven't been that great about going around and, and picking their feet up. So I'm just gonna go right now and just see how they do. Um, get them. Like I said, if I, if I just did this every day, and you don't have to hold them up for a long time, just pick them up and hold them for just a little bit. And how good they're going to get when it's time for you to trim their feet or for a farrier to come in to do the feet trimming. So, this is so important to do. And I... Admit, I have been doing a terrible job of that. Although this morning they sure seem to be doing great as far as holding the, picking the feet up. But they're ready to trim again. I can tell that. Let me get a hoof knife. Maybe they'll, I can just do it like this. So I can't remember when I did trim these guys last but I will lift the hoof up and show you what I'm talking about. Come here. Okay maybe we can see it right here. See that ridge along the outside? That should be flat and down level with all the rest of it. And these these spots here they need to be brought down. And so that's how I know that it's ready to be trimmed again. It's usually six to eight weeks when you need to re-trim them and uh, but with the everything that's going on the farm a lot of times it gets a little bit behind. I'm going to get a collar and uh, I'm going to show you a few things as far as the progress and I say progress because I really haven't done anything yet but uh, how they're coming with harnessing and so this is going to be the first time I've showed you the harness and putting the harness on. 
and uh, I still don't have the collars, the right, the right size collars. Matter of fact, let me get a tape measure. Okay, so this collar here is a 25 inch collar. Now I know that by taking a tape measure and going like this, from this point to this point is 25 inches. It's actually a little bit less than 25 because when they're new, they're a little bit tighter together and they tend to be longer. So, but I know that's a 25 inch collar. This collar is an old collar that's pretty well shot. And that would have been a, probably a, a 19 inch collar, I would guess. So we have the extreme from a 19 inch to a 25 inch collar. And of course, neither one of these fit right, but I will put them on to show you how, how they fit and then we'll go from there. Okay, if I can get a pin here. The horses let this sit. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put the 20, I mean the 19 inch collar on Earl. So sometimes I put it over the heads, but this one opens up, so I'm just gonna slide up over his neck like this. And thanks, Duke. As you can see, this collar is way, way too small for this horse. There's no way you can even get your fingers in there. So I will not use that collar for him, um, but I just wanted to show you what that was. So now I will take the 25 inch collar. Now this 25 inch collar, if I had a heavy pad on it, it won't be quite so bad, of course, but it's still way too big for Duke. So with Duke, and this is just a better collar, I'm going to just throw it over his head so he gets used to it, which he's very good at. So as you can see, this collar is way, way too big for him. Now, if I had the sweat pad on, it would bring it up to a little bit better, but it's still way too big. I'm gonna leave those collars on and continue on with the harnesses. Now, don't forget, I'm not going to, and that's a lot, one thing a lot of people ask, when will you start working them? Well, I feel I've been working them since the day I put my hands on them, way back at the former owner's uh, yard. Um, I've been training them ever since then. Every time I step into the barn and step into the stalls and put my hands on them, I'm training them. But they won't actually go to do any pulling of any size, you know, of any real pulling until they're four years old. Um, a lot of people do it a lot younger, but I, I just don't feel it's good because they don't have their growth. They don't have their, their bones aren't ready for that type of, of work. Now I hope to, in the near future, get them hitched onto a cart and just driving them around so that they know how to drive. But that's not doing anything to hurt them as far as their bones. So that's what we're gonna be working with um, or attempting to do. There was something, oh I know. I do have, a friend of mine has another uh, couple collars that are in between these two. So I'm gonna go see what he has and hopefully he'll let me borrow one. The, the colts are growing so fast, there's no sense buying a new collar because we don't know what size they're gonna end up using. My guess is that 25 inch collar will probably fit him when he's ready to go to work in a couple of years. Although, at the way they're growing, I may, I may be wrong, you may need a 26 inch collar. Okay, let's go on to harnesses. So this is the harness that I purchased from a friend of mine. It's an, an old harness, but I figured it was gonna work just fine for what I have. This is a, off a, was used on a pair of halflingers. So I figured, well, good, halflingers are small. They should be just right for the size of my colts. There again, as these colts are growing and the speed they're growing, I don't even know how long I can use these harnesses. I'm pretty sure I can use them for a little while though. Let us throw them, this harness, I got another one just like it, but whoops. Earl just shook his collar. Hey, 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 hey. And hey, hey, no. Just shook his collar and the snap came undone. It fell right off. So I'm gonna set that there for right now. So let's throw this harness. Well, before we do, let's let me explain a few things. I've done a lot of videos on my harnesses that I use for my big horses and they're all D-ring harnesses. So that means they have a, a D right here and it's totally different than these harnesses. These, this harness is what you would call a Western style harness. I have never used these type of harnesses at all. Um, 
the bulk of the things are the same, except the main thing is they have long tugs, and mine have a, a joint in the tugs at the right here at the belly girth and, and back pad. Um, but, uh, and mine need a three piece neck yoke, but it doesn't really matter because for some time to come, we're just gonna be driving around on the ground and or hitching them to a cart. And so this harness will be fine if it's big enough and, and how long it stays big enough for these colts, we'll, that we'll have to find out. So let's show this on Duke. And we know that collar is too big for Duke, but I just want to explain a few things as we throw it on. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Hey. So I'm gonna throw the hames above the collar. And I'm gonna just slowly slide everything onto top of his back. And I'll take the hames and set them on the collar. Okay. And adjust the other side. Okay, so now we have a collar that is too big for Duke. And we have hames that are way too small for this collar. Hope you can see this. Now, if I was to pull the collar down or the hames down to where they possibly should be positioned on that collar, if you come up here, you'll see that the top place for the top hame strap is too low. You want this to be somewhat straight across. So this should actually be way up here. And that's, so that's never gonna work properly. Um, and if I was to slide the top up to where it belongs, which would be approximately there, you'll see that those hames will never fit that collar. There's gonna be a big gap there. So we know that collar is too big. And now we can see that those hames are way too small for that collar. So now let's go put this collar or this harness on Earl and see how that goes on the smaller collar. Earl, you're alone. Earl, get over. <laughs> Leave that alone. Okay, so I'm going to get the hame situated on the, this collar. So we already have realized that this collar is way too small for him. So these hames, if this was positioned on the bottom where it should be, so that the hames fit around the collar properly, we can see that this strap is way too high up. So this, these hames would work on this collar, but we'd have to adjust it down to there. And then, then it'd be fairly level across the top. And then we could hitch up the hame strap, which we don't have, onto there. So I'm hoping that with these other collars that I hope to get, one of them will fit them more properly and we'll see how that works. Now there's one other thing I wanna check out today before we get done. Um, there is a belly girth on this harness, but not on the other harness. So I need to go up to the harness shop and, and have one made up. So I'm gonna just very carefully get my hand underneath his belly and grab the belly girth and swing it around to see if it's about the right length. And it looks like it's gonna be fairly good. I think when I make the new belly girth though, I'll make it just a little bit longer so that we know it's gonna fit for a while at least until, until it's time for, until they grow out of that one. So now I wanted to come to the real purpose of my video. As you see, Brenda's not here today. She has gone on a trip. It is November 16th. It is Trudy's birthday. So Brenda and uh, six other women have taken Trudy on a surprise trip. So they've been gone since, you know, for four, three days now. So they're, they're coming back today late, but um, I'm actually gonna miss Trudy on her birthday, which I guess is probably about the first time I've ever not been around on Trudy's birthday. But I just wanted to say a happy birthday to Trudy. Um, 
Trudy is kind of, has always kind of been our miracle baby, miracle child. Um, I, I think there's times when things happen in life, it's so easy for us to forget all about them as time goes on. But I think it's very important to um, remember a lot of those things. So I call Trudy a miracle child sometimes because um, when she was a year old, she was seemingly perfectly normal. But between ages one and two, something ha went, went wrong. Um, she never gained a, any weight during that whole year. She got really thin and we took her to the doctors and uh, you know tried all kinds of different things to no one the doctors could never really figure out what was wrong with her but she was just losing weight all the time um, she would eat some and usually she'd just throw up and and just it was awful she just was skinny and it was just an awful time for for us as parents and uh, the, the reason i'm saying this is because i think it's important that we we remember these things and over time we can we tend to forget them but it was such a time for me as a parent um, we, we as parents want to take care of our kids and there's sometimes it's just totally out of our control and I can re clearly remember during that time towards the end of that that year um, just giving Trudy up to God you know we we want to be in control and just realized that I, I was out of control. There's nothing I could do. And we had to leave it totally up to God to, to, to heal her. And uh, so that's, that's what I did. I just totally told God that she's yours and, you know, you do what's best. And it was just, just a short while after there, we saw a change. And she started gaining weight. I remember... Um, <laughs> Chocolate ice cream, if I recall, and I might have got some of these details wrong, but uh, that helped helped her out quite a lot. And and it wasn't what the doctors had prescribed for us to do, but it just seemed to work. And but I'm just convinced it's actually more of God's hand that healed her. So, anyways, I I um, love you, Trudy. I hope you had a great birthday. And I want to end this video showing a bunch of pictures of Trudy. She has. Um, over the years helped me out a lot with the horses. Of late she's been so busy teaching and her interests have kind of changed. She's not as much interested in horses as she used to be but she still even with her busyness and, and all she still comes out and helps quite a bit and does a lot of stuff on the side with the technical stuff of, of these YouTube videos. So I just want to say I, I love you Trudy and uh, I thank you for all your help and I'll probably get into trouble because I I'm doing this video and wishing her a happy birthday and I haven't done it to, to everybody else in my family and uh, who knows, I may not do it again. But uh, um, anyways, I want to uh, leave this video with a bunch of pictures of Trudy that we have from um, more from younger years when she was helping me out with the horses.